Hi everyone, Dennis Foley from Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about sound absorption versus noise transmission. Still a lot of confusion on this topic, so I thought we'd revisit it, try another tack, see if we can uh, get some more comprehension and understanding. Absorption, absorption, absorption is the reducing the strength or the amplitude of the energy, okay? That's what we're trying to do with absorption. We can do it a couple different ways, but the first way is to, our, our major goal is to reduce the strength. <clears throat> That's what we're trying to do, okay? Noise transmission is reducing the strength of vibrations. So we got air and vibrations through solids, okay? So those are two different approaches. We got energy going through the air and we have to absorb the excess amounts of energy. Now that pertains to both low frequency energy, waves, and middle and high frequency energy rays. Both take different technologies to manage, and we'll talk about that down the list. But for purposes of the beginning here, we want to understand that we got airborne energy, and we have airborne energy for a while, and then it strikes a solid, our walls, and that's where we get the noise transmission issue. So I'm going to walk through those two processes, and hopefully we'll have a better understanding of the two. Air transmission versus solid, we've already went over that. Air movement across the surface area. This is how we absorb middle and high frequency. Let's use foam as an example. I don't have a piece here, but if I did. Air goes across the surface of the foam. <clears throat> the structure of the foam is open-celled. So as it goes across the structure, some enters the cell, but a lot just goes across the surface area and creates friction. Well, friction causes heat. Heat is an energy transformation, not getting rid of the energy, transforming it from air movement to heat through friction, and we're gonna get absorption that way. We're gonna be able to reduce the strength or the amplitude of it, okay? Middle and highs, we work with the rays, that's energy usually above 125. So we work with ray, working with rays and friction and the heat and the and energy transformation, transformation that goes with that. Wave pressure, low frequency pressure. Remember, big oscillating waves throughout the room. Okay, rays are like sunshine. This is like ocean, okay? So what you have to realize here is that the technology that you use for rays, middle and high frequency energy, completely different than what you use for lows because that's pressure. So in that sound absorption category, we have a subset. We have ray energy and wave energy, and both take different forms of treatment. All right, <clears throat> noise transmission is vibrational acoustics. That's where we take all of this airborne energy and it strikes a wall surface, okay? Then it becomes vibrational. So it goes from this, we call it a snake, to a worm. So the goal of any barrier is to have a series of layers that are frequency and amplitude dependent on the noise that's striking it. We're not using friction. We're not using an energy transformation change to heat. We're using what we like to call the truck ramp example. Now, if any of you have been driving in the mountains, you'll see these signs, especially when there's eight, nine, ten percent grades downhill. If a truck loses its brakes, there's an exit ramp that he can go. Well, when he leaves that exit ramp, he goes up another ramp. Usually it's about a 45 degree ramp and at the top is sand or water. So the truck heads up the ramp. As it goes up, what's it doing? Gravity is being used, not friction to produce heat like in our uh, ray absorption example but we're using gravity to drain the energy, the forward momentum of the truck before it strikes the water or the sand at the top, which is just a safety measure in case you didn't get it all with the 45 degree incline, okay? So we're bleeding energy. That's what we do in our sandwiches, which is our barrier technology. We construct different layers of a sandwich, so to speak, that are frequency and amplitude dependent on the noise here. So if we got a lot of noise coming in, we want just a little bit of noise coming out. So it's completely 
different. Their objectives are the same. Reduce, 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 reduce. Reduce pressure, reduce reflections, reduce strength or amplitude, okay? But the processes involved in doing that are a little bit different. So you cannot use sound absorption technology to stop noise. Everybody tries to, it won't work. Completely different material types, completely different physics. Vibrational acoustics versus airborne energy. So this building insulation nonsense that you're using to keep the room warm and cold won't stop noise. And no wall hanging panel will stop noise, okay? So you have to be very, very cognizant of the why if you're gonna fix the problem, okay? Sound absorption versus noise transmission. Another approach, hopefully this will increase our comprehension and understanding. Hope this helps, thank you. Thank you for watching this video and if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to, so please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis, so that'll help you. Thank you.